Hey neighbor, woo, September is finally here. Let's talk about gardening strategies for September, what you need to be doing now, and we're gonna talk about specific varieties. Well, let me tell you something. I don't know that I've ever been gladder to see September. I really struggled the last two weeks in August. You know, here we had over 100 degree weather the last two weeks. We had some brutal days. To be honest with you, I was not in the garden mood. I did the best I could, but man, it was brutal. Didn't want to get out and do anything. I knew the reset was going to start soon, and then we had Hurricane Idella move in. She dropped four inches of rain, which we needed, folks. We had done got bad dry. We got some wind. We had some limbs down, but we didn't have a lot. I mean, we didn't have a lot of damage at all. Some of our neighbors over in Valdosta had some damage, and uh, some of our neighbors to the, uh, to the east of us got hit pretty hard. But anyway, we've survived. We've moved on. Now the temperatures have cooled down, just like overnight. Boom, they so much better. Getting in the mood about fall gardening. You kind of see it in the air, feel it in the air. And man, am I ready. So let's talk about what we need to be doing in September. September for us here in the Deep South is the time, the ideal time to start your fall transplants. Now we told you back in August, you could start them for your first crop and that's entirely true. But for me, September is one of my favorite times. And I'll tell you the reason why. It takes me about four weeks to grow out my brassicas, four to five weeks, and I get to transplant them in the ground around the 1st of October. For me personally, that's the ideal time. I love growing these brassicas because I start getting some cooler weather. My white fly pressure's not near as bad as it has been. I don't have to water as much. And then we start getting the cooler weather and my greens and my brassicas just taste better to me. And I'm more in the mood to eat them than I am when it's blistering hot. All right, so one of the unique things you can grow this year that you may not have grown before, and I'm in the same camp with you, is celery. I did not know to just a few years ago how popular celery was to grow in the uh, wintertime, fall, and early spring down here in the south. I was actually in a, a commercial greenhouse operation in Ruskin, Florida when I first seen my celery growing and I you know asked them about it and found out then a lot of celery is grown in Florida commercial celery I didn't never know that for some reason that I thought it was growing in California but come to find out we can grow celery here fine and uh, so we added a variety this year called tango now last year mama Hall's grew celery in a root pouch and it did extremely well she overwintered it um, now she did cover it when we had that Arctic blast come through, but it withstood a lot of cool weather and it really flourished and did great. And we enjoyed it immensely. It was wonderful to have fresh celery. We also took it, what we had left over, didn't want to eat fresh, freeze dried it. So we got celery that we grew that we can eat anytime. So celery to me is going to be a big one this year. I'm interested in, uh, in seeing how it turns out. I'm excited about growing it. Tango is the variety we've added. Tango, folks, is a hybrid. It is a easy to grow celery type. Tango is a very popular celery variety. And it's probably one of the best ones from the home garden because it is easy to grow and forgiving. Now, a couple of things about celery. You need high organic matter for the soil there and you need to give it a lot of water. If you ever eat celery, you know it contains a lot of water in it. So you never need to let uh, your celery stress for water. And then it normally takes about 10 to 12 weeks to grow it out as a transplant. These seeds are tiny. So you don't want to direct seed this. You want to grow your transplants out and then transplant them out into your raised bed, your root pouch, or into your garden. Now, the way I like to do this right here is use something like a 338, uh, a 162, or even one of these 12 cells right here, or 24 cells. And with these seeds being very, very small, that means that we don't need to plant them very deep. We're really just going to press them into the soil a little bit and we're going to cover them here with just a little bit of perlite and that's it. We're going to keep them watered well. We're going to fertilize them good in about 8 to 12 weeks, somewhere in there, according to how well you are growing transplants, we're going to have them ready to go into the garden. I think you'll find tango, you know, really good for the home garden because it's not stringy. It's a real smooth type of uh, celery. All right, folks, another thing too, if you're gonna grow your own onion plants, it's time to plant them here in the south. You see this map right here? Short day onions need to be started now in September to be ready to transplant them in November. Normally takes uh, six to eight, 10 weeks to grow them out there. And uh, what we got right here is a Texas Super Sweet. It's actually a 10, 15 wide 
Texas Super Sweet Onion. And if you didn't know what the 1015 stands for, that means when you need to transplant them into the ground. That's the middle of November. Uh, we normally like to plant ours around the 1st of November, but I was talking to my onion farmer the other day, and he says they plant them all during November, and it's any time during the month is fine. So don't get caught up on trying to plant them at a particular time in November. If you're growing short day onions, you got a pretty good window there of when you can get them in the ground. These right here, kind of small seeds as well, not as small as the celery. We're going to do them the same way. Now, normally I like to grow these in a 338 because it doesn't take much room to grow these onions. A 338 tray is perfect for them. You want to plant them shallow, smaller seeds, cover them with a little perlite. And then when they get up, the thing about onions is you need to keep them trimmed off. When those green tops get up about six inches, trim them at about three inches, continue to do that. And what that does is stresses that bulb and makes that bulb get bigger and bigger and bigger. If you don't do that, then you're gonna have really, really small bulbs to transplant. So cutting them back is the trick to growing onion plants. Plant them now, transplant them in November. Don't stress if something happens or you miss this right here, we will have onion plants for sale in November. We're actually going to start pre-selling them next week. We're going to have three different types of Vidalia onions, sweet onions. So either we grow your own from seed or either get your uh, transplants from us. All right, let's talk about broccoli. Broccoli is probably one of the most favorite things people like to grow in the fall of the year, and understandably why. I normally recommend Green Magic, as I did back in August, to plant as your first plant. But I'm going to give you another variety I like to plant this time of the year going on into the fall when the weather is cooler because Green Magic is known for its heat tolerance. But now that the heat is let up from us, we can switch up and grow some of these other varieties. Godzilla broccoli is one I grew uh, for the last couple of years. I like it a lot. Makes a huge head, has a lot of vigor, a great broccoli to grow for this slot in the fall. Another couple ones that you may want to check out that we've been growing for last year is sprouting broccoli. Doesn't make that big old head, it makes a little bitty head and you pinch these off, you eat them in salads, you can stir fry them. The flavor of these things are off the chain. One of them is called Asperbrot, which is a green sprouting broccoli. Some of you may know it as broccolini if you go to these high-end restaurants and eat it. Another one is burgundy broccoli, and this is a sprouting broccoli that is burgundy color, that purplish color here. Now, to me, it has a very unique and very smooth flavor to it, so I love my burgundy sprouting broccoli. So let me give you something new to grow this year to experience that you hadn't grown before. All right, let's talk about cauliflower. Maybe not as popular as broccoli, but we love cauliflower. All right, the one I normally recommend if you want a white cauliflower, I love Twister because it twists up, protects that head. But let's think outside the box here and let's talk about one that I've grown several years, but I hadn't grown it in the last year or two, cheddar. And just like the name implies, it has that cheddar color to it. Kind of that yellowish, orangish color here. It's a good variety to grow. Change it up a little bit. You have a different color type cauliflower there. It performs really well here in the south. You may have to wrap the heads when it starts maturing out, but cheddar is a good one to switch up to. Well, you know I'm from the south, so we got to talk about collards. Uh, a couple of varieties that you could plant now that's going to work out well for you is going to be top bunch. Whether it's the top bunch or the top bunch too, really doesn't matter. You're not going to know the difference in it. This top bunch is a good short variety here. It didn't lend itself well to cropping a lot, but it's good. It's a mellow type flavor to it. So if you don't like those strong collards, this top bunch is a good one. Probably the most popular collard out there. And if you buy it in the grocery store in those small bunches, that's the variety you're probably buying. Very productive, uh, you know, it's easy to grow. All right, let's talk about an heirloom variety called Morris heading collard. Now, the folks up in North Carolina call this the old cabbage collards. Now, this is a good heirloom variety. It's going to grow out a little bit different, maybe not quite as productive, but has different flavor profile, kind of mellow. I grew some of it last year. really loved the flavor to it. And if you're into heirlooms and collards, that's probably one you need to try. All right, how about kale? Uh, a variety that I think you should probably be growing this time of year is red Russian. There again, switch it up a little bit. Red Russian has a very colorful leaf to it and stem, and it's a good variety. It's good to eat as a baby leaf. So if you don't like big kale leaves and you like to eat them as baby greens, Red Russian's a good one. It's going to add a lot of color to your, to your dish there, and they also are very good to eat. And it's a, it's a good one to try if you've never grown it before.
All right, let's talk about kohlrabi. Some of you probably know, never grown kohlrabi before. I would highly encourage you to try it, even though I'm on a small scale there. Kohlrabi is something we like to grow. Make coleslaw out of it. We can roast it in the oven. We just love it. Now, we've got a couple of different varieties here I'm going to talk about today. Quick Star is a good one. If you're looking for something quick, it grows out, I mean, 30 to 45 days. But I think my favorite one and one I would encourage you to plant in September is the Conan. Conan's going to make a larger head to it. And these heads are right off the ground, unlike a turnip that's in the ground. This is right above the ground. And it's about the same size as a turnip root, you know, about this big here. Conan makes a large root there, or a large ball, I might say. Very consistent, and it's an all-American slitch winter. It's going to take a little bit longer to grow out, but hey, the weather's working for us. So Conan Karabi would be a good one to try this fall. All right, so we've been waiting to grow lettuce. Now's the time to get our lettuce started here. I got where I like to transplant my lettuce. A couple varieties here I want to talk to you about. Cherokee lettuce here, and that's going to be a loose leaf head. Has a lot of good color to it, kind of a reddish color here. Grows really good. That's going to be a good one to grow this time of year. Now, if you like romaine, let's talk about it for just a minute. Coastal Star Romaine, which is a staple as far as the romaine goes. And you know those lettuce seeds can be kind of hard to handle. This particular one is pelleted, so it lends itself really well to being able to seed in those seed starting trays. I like to grow my lettuce as like a 162 because I like to grow a lot of it. All my neighbors depend on me for me to grow their lettuce plants out, and they're fun to grow because they grow out quick. So if you like romaine, Coastal Star, if you want a loose leaf, try one of the Cherokees. All right, so the weather's cooled down. We're all feeling better. Storms are behind us. It's time to move forward. September's here. It's time for us to get out there and get working in that fall garden. 